Hello Vikings and welcome back from vacation. Although we missed you, you probably didn't miss being here for a whole week. Some of us stayed close to home on vacation, others traveled far and wide for new and exciting adventures. Brandon Bailey and Lexa Lawrence went on a cruise to South America and brought back this vlog so we could all be jealous. We're flying down to Houston, Texas and taking a, a cruise down to Central America. Woke up all in two to like this morning, but I think I'll be okay. I'll be okay. My car still smells like my mom is gonna kill me. Gonna kill me. Fixed back up from corner to corner, so I guess I'll hit the highway. We're in the cruise currently. Oh, I'm so excited. And then we're gonna explore the boardwalk. A good day, a good cousin, 18. And I still live with my parents, yeah, they're not like yours. Well, yours are more. Hey guys, me and Alexa, and it's day two, two on the cruise. Okay, look how blue it is. We're at the fancy dinner. We got some hot chicken soup. Good morning. Done. Yeah, and it's, it's 80 degrees. Where are we going? Honduras. Honduras. Let's see Kinley's. Wait, his literally look like sneakers. Wrong person. Oh my god. My dad. Oh my god. Course registration is right around the corner. Most of us, with the exception of the seniors, of course, will be having assemblies this week to fill out our schedules with the classes we want to take. Over the next few weeks, we will be talking to some teachers of elective classes and asking them to describe their course. We will also talk to some students currently taking those classes, what they thought of the experience. First up is Mr. Kemp's Sound Tech class, followed by Mr. Torres' Financial Literacy. Take it away, gentlemen. So the name of the elective is Sound Recording Technology. There's four different levels of sound recording tech. And it is basically getting you from the fundamentals of sound engineering all the way up to being able to record and mix and produce your own music. I signed up for this course because um, it's in my field of interest, uh, sound production, audio recording, and uh, communications. 
and I started this sophomore year. It's been pretty beneficial, especially when we do the hands-on stuff, because I think I already know a good amount of the recording side of things when it comes to music, but when we're out in the auditorium, all the cables and stuff, yeah, it's a little confusing. So students who are very into music, but don't necessarily play an instrument, might be interested in taking this course because we dive into the fundamentals of music and you actually get to create your own music in this course. You get to record music, you get to produce and mix music, but you don't necessarily have to play the music yourself. So things that I like about the course this year are, it's kind of non as traditional as it was before. We used to be in the auditorium doing a lot of more cable work and hardware work, but now it's good because we're learning more about the actual type of sound that we're working with, how sound's affected by everything. And it's especially good for like the first year kids because that plays into a huge part when we're in the auditorium. So this elective is gonna be semester based. So each level is one semester. So it'd be a part-time, but you take it every day. If you don't know a lot of the stuff, it's really good to learn, especially when you want to go to the music field, communications, broadcasting. So there's a couple different projects. A lot of this is project-based learning. So we're gonna work on setting up sound systems. So you might actually work on a play or a concert and setting up live sound for that. We're gonna record music. So you're gonna set up microphones to record instruments or record vocalists. And you're gonna mix your own music. So you're gonna take those recordings and master them with all of the different tools that we have available to have a finished MP3 or whatever file you decide to make. Some things I'd say to students that are interested in taking the course is just go for it. It's kind of like one of the more outlandish uh, electives because it can tie into a lot of uh, jobs, good experience. It's just so fun. Uh, it's a really fun class, especially if you like to dive in and really listen intently to music, listen with a critical ear, and figure out the tools that you can use to make music sound the way you would like it to sound. My name is Mr. Torres and I teach financial literacy. This course in particular is called Financial Literacy and it's about learning and understanding about money and how to be fiscally responsible. We signed up for this course because I love Mr. Torres. He's really fun and energetic. He brings like a lot of fun things to the class. He also brings us donuts. I think every kid should take this class and I think the school made it a requirement so kids understand the whole process of saving, budgeting, purchasing a home, purchasing a car, investments, and many, many other topics that will cover and help the students understand how money works. Honestly, my favorite part of the class is the free donuts that Mr. Torres brings in from time to time. This is a part-time, it's only a half a year, a semester one and semester two class. So far, we haven't been that far into the class. We've learned how to use like a W-2 and like we're learning how to do taxes. So we have an investment project that we learn how to do stocks, uh, crypto, and we actually invest for over a period of time where the kids actually enjoy. And whoever makes the most money, you never know, there may be a prize at the end of the tunnel. Um, definitely join. It's a good credit for college and Mr. Torres is wicked fun. My course is a breathtaking, eye-opening experience that allows students to understand really how much money they need to live the lifestyle that they want to live. Most people think that they're living their best life right now, especially when they're in high school. And I always tell the kids the same thing I tell my son. You're living my best life because it's my money and I want them to understand how to control their destiny and their financial freedom. Because at the end of the day, I want them to have financial freedom. Those are some pretty cool elective options. I should learn how to become a famous DJ in sound tech. And I could learn how to be a millionaire in financial literacy. 
The Aspen portal will open on March 13th for students to fill in their class choices. So start talking to your teachers about their recommendations today. Did you notice Mr. Torres is fit in that last segment? Everett has great taste in clothes. Speaking of clothes, we stopped some of you in the hall the other day for a fit check. Hi Mikes, today we're going to be walking around the hallway asking people to give us a fit check for this. My events. My name is Gia. Adeline Stapleton. Emma Rollin. John Hurley. Jadara Carolla. Milani. Karina. Izzy. Peyton. Carolyn. In London. Bella. Brandon. I get a fit check. Sure. Um, my pants are Zara, my shoes are Nike, my shirt is Lulu, my necklace is Chanel. These bracelets are from TJ Maxx and this one is Hermes. My sweatshirt is from my favorite store, my boyfriend's closet. Um, my shirt is from my boyfriend's college. My pants are from Aerie and I'm wearing Uggs. I got this from my Noah Khan concert. This because I just won Kahoot in French class. Uh, Lululemon, Ugg, Kendra Scott, all Kendra Scott. And then that's about it. Oh, uh, we got drip. You know, more drip, <laughs> even more drip, some crusty drip, <laughs> a lot of drip, some drip, fork and spoon, you know, I gotta get, <laughs> you know, more drip, everything's just drip. The brief insurance, you know, just a black, black sweatshirt, <laughs> um, got the black hat to match it, and got New Balance shoes on. Okay. I got the basic white tee, you know, the black sweats, me and John are matching, and I got the Uggs on, and my hat. From Lids. These are from Amazon, fake Uggs, uh, my boyfriend's closet, and uh, my dad's closet. These are from Adidas. These are from Lululemon. This is Nike. These are from Converse. These are from Hollister, and this is from my dad. Good check. Um, these are from Ugg. These are from Lululemon, and this is Triton Cheer. Okay. Yeah, this is it. Uh, I got Lululemon shorts on. Just black t-shirt from Walmart bracelets they're Nila's and a chewy one and my rings and Wait, this is a fidget ring and then I got this at I forget but it's strip oh. <laughs> so shirt is from uh, Triton Bike Soccer pants are from Lululemon socks Nike slippers Uggs um, my earrings are from Francesca's and Amazon and my necklace is from Swarovski Crystals, Apple Watch, and Cape Cod bracelet. That I got for Christmas last year. And I got this $10 pants I got from Marshalls. And I got these compression pants from uh, Dick's for basketball season. And I had practice this morning. And I got these headphones. Those are some great outfits. Hope you all enjoyed watching this video. From VTV, I'm Tiara. And I'm Michelle. I don't think any of those fits compared to Mr. Torres's. He's the GOAT. Agreed. Last year, Cam McDonald and Joe Grimaldi submitted a documentary to the Salem Film Festival that was selected by the judges for a live viewing at the Salem Cinema. This year, the guys are back with a new submission about a Russian teacher, familiar to us in VTV. He fled Russia because of the war in Ukraine and sought asylum here in the U.S. Sit back and enjoy this world premiere showing of General, please. Detained. Detained. Makers calling the trip an eye opener and saying America is at a breaking point. House Speaker Mike Johnson is calling on President Biden to take immediate action on the migrant crisis. Entry is closed again. There's nothing compassionate about allowing hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants to cut in front of millions of law abiding potential immigrants around the world. On making sure we have the resources needed to humanely process migrants coming through the southern border. Crisis at the border is pushing major cities to the breaking point. In some sort of priority listing, uh, some sort of priority rating system. Now, we have spoken with advocates, uh, including Pedro Rios, who has been uh, diligent in working with a lot of these migrants. I fled Russia in July 2022. It was never my plan, but staying there became unbearable. I had been opposing Putin's regime for years, participating in marches, supporting the Russian opposition, and openly expressing my views despite knowing that it was not safe. 
And when the invasion of Ukraine began, the situation deteriorated further. Due to newly adopted laws, speaking out against the Russian forces and condemning the criminal war is prohibited. In fact, calling it a war is forbidden. It's officially labeled a special military operation. The Russian government persecutes all those who dissent. People face punishment for saying no to the war, protesting against it, or delivering anti-war speeches or poems. And the public at large supports the war. Many people genuinely believe that Russia is doing something good while others act that way out of fear of being fired or mistreated. There was no place for me in Russia, so I left. Thousands of men continue to rush out of Russia after President Vladimir Putin called for an additional 300,000 troops. After leaving Russia, I went to Turkey because it was a pretty cheap option. Russians don't need a visa to enter Turkey and obtaining a residence permit there was relatively easy. However, I didn't speak any Turkish, so living there was not that comfortable. Plus, Turkey has significant human rights issues, so I was certain that I wouldn't stay there forever. While in Turkey, I learned that my university friend had gone to the US to seek political asylum. After looking into it, I thought that I wanted to do the same. I knew it was a country that would protect my basic human rights and allow me to live freely. Moreover, I had a few acquaintances there including my counterpart, Robert Lathrop, whom I had met several years ago. I met Dimitri over email. He reached out to me. He was teaching a video production class uh, at his high school in Russia, and he was looking for an American video production class to collaborate with. So he reached out and our classes began to send videos back and forth. So Dimitri and I have known each other for almost four years now. This summer, uh, he reached out to me again and told me that he was interested in seeking asylum here in the U.S. and he needed a, a United States sponsor. So he asked me if I would sponsor he and his uh, friends to seek asylum here in the U.S. So we planned to fly to Mexico and cross the border there. Uh, we didn't want to do that illegally because it was too risky and dangerous, but thankfully in January 2023, a special app called CBP-1 was released, and anyone can use this app to request an appointment at the border. The officers welcome you, ask you why are you there, provide you with some papers, and then you're free to go. It usually takes several hours, or at least that's what we expected. We applied for an appointment every day for 35 days, and finally secured one for August 4th. It turned out that male solo travelers from Russia, Georgia, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and a few other countries were being detained, regardless of the reason for seeking asylum. Therefore, we were prepared for the possibility that something might go wrong. When I went to the officer, she said, we have some new rules, so you're going to be detained. You will spend a few days here, and then they will transfer you to a better place. I spent seven days being detained at the border in a small cell. It wasn't my best week, to be honest. When I found out that Dimitri was detained at the border, um, I immediately started to try, and to try to find out information uh, about where he was, how long he was being held, and why he was being held. But one of the problems I ran into was all of the numbers that were listed for the border, um, nobody would pick up uh, when I called. So finding information out about why he was there and how long he was going to stay was nearly impossible. Some of us get flown to Louisiana, so correctional center. So when I finally heard from Dimitri, uh, he was able to call me finally when he got to Louisiana. I started worrying about him, honestly, because I felt or I heard in his voice that he was getting tired of um, being detained. Um, he was tired of the situation that he was in and I started worrying that he was um, losing faith that this could actually turn out in a positive way. Due to backlogs and a shortage of immigration judges, it can take a year or more to have an individual hearing. The wait time is really pretty substantial. However, since I was detained, my hearing was scheduled for December, only four months after I crossed the border. And I did it. I won. I was granted asylum after four and a half months in detention, so I was super happy. I walked out of the courtroom thinking that it was all worth it. I was grateful to my friends for being there for me, supporting me and helping me a lot. And frankly, I was really proud of myself. 
I'm absolutely excited for Dimitri that he has uh, now received his official asylum. He's able to work here in the States. He's able to, to hold a job. Um, and I'm looking forward to great things for him in the future. I know that the American immigration crisis is a hot topic right now. And I believe that it's an extremely complex issue. And some aspects of immigration have caused controversy. However, no other nation has as large an immigrant population as the United States. And it's essential to find a balance between welcoming immigrants and ensuring the national security. I know Americans are sick of migrants riding on top trains or camping outside hotels in New York, but not every immigrant is like that. The United States recognizes the right of asylum and many people are seeking it. They come here to work legally, pay taxes and build their future, seeking a better life. That was a great story. And a happy ending. Thanks, guys. And good luck at the Salem Film Festival. Well, that's it for our episode today. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you again next week. I'm Molly. And I'm Bella. Bye, Vikes. Horns up. OK. All right, we good? I think so. <sighs> you tell me. Wait, is it, wait, is it recording? Is it recording? Hello, Vikings, and welcome back from vacation. Although we missed you, you probably didn't miss being here for a whole week. Oh, Molly, I did so good, and you said I was bad on my long part. It's so aggressive. It's so quick. Just take a deep breath and put your hands down. <laughs> Most of us, dot, 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 with the exception of the seniors, of course, dot, dot, dot. What? You're not well, supposed to say dot, dot, dot. I might. <laughs> when it's like a dog throws up. Do you know that sound that they make? <laughs> <laughs> like, take the... Mm. Mm. Like, my dog drove up yesterday, that's why I'm thinking of it. <laughs> it's philanthropy, start with an S. Of uh, drum roll, please. Detained. 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 No. Look fearful, ready? Detained. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy the world premiere showing of drum roll, please. <laughs> what the hell? Drum roll, please. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>